This is the newsroom for today, Tuesday, January 5, 2021. We are broadcasting to you on E1, SCAR TV, NTN and Tarzi TV in Bartica. In the headlines, woman who faked oil and gas training to face 17 charges. Police say robbery suspect assaulted cops first at Starbrook Market. Guyana to end mother-to-child transmission of HIV and further reduce new infections by 2025. We still have a lot of work uh, to be done over the next five years if we are going to get to what was the 2020 target and then move beyond that. And a sport, Football Federation proposes packed 2021 calendar pending approval and Kelsey Benjamin eyeing spot in Golan Jaguars set up. With the news, I'm Avanash Ramzan. Thanks for joining us. We started by telling you that the Director of Public Prosecutions has recommended that charges be laid against a woman named as the General Secretary for the Inland and Offshore Recruiting and Clearing Agency who has been accused of operating a fake oil and gas training course. The woman is expected to appear in New Amsterdam Magistrates Court on Wednesday to answer the 17 charges of obtaining monies by false pretense. The woman had last advertised training courses for standards of training certification and watchkeeping for seafarers at a total cost of $160,000. Persons were told that they would receive competency and endorsement certificates from Honduras and Panama that would guarantee employment in the petroleum sector. So far, 17 persons have come forward and filed official complaints after they did not receive their certificates. After weeks of no response from the woman, a report was made to the regional commander at the time, Calvin Brutus, who got ranks to start an investigation into the matter. After the investigation was completed, a file was sent to the DPP for advice and subsequently sent back for additional information. The DPP finally recommended charges for the woman. One of the men who was fooled into taking the course spoke with the newsroom but did not want his identity revealed. 2019, a friend of mine, he, he did a semen course in Georgetown and he told me that he did this stuff and he got the certificate and so um, he did it at a place called Mapa and um, afterwards I saw the stuff and I realized I got an opportunity to get into the oil and gas and I told a friend about it and he told me that there is this woman in New Amsterdam that does the very course. And she told me about the course. She said that she um, she would give the certificate, and afterwards she would find a job for you. That the job is guaranteed after you finish the course. I did some digging, and um, she showed me the certificate. The very the very certificate that my friend showed me. She showed me that it is um, issued from some place called Honduras or somewhere. I'm not too familiar with the names. Prior to the course commencing, somebody told me that. Um, Rumors are going wrong that the woman is not legit and that people would go and cry to give on them money and hotel things and because they're not getting results. So I went to her and I told her what I heard and I'd like to have back my money that I'm going to go in Georgetown and I'm going to do it there. She relayed to me that um, let me rest assured that her business is legit and that within six weeks I will get my certificate. So Cole held her to her word, and um, six weeks after, I went, I checked. Oh, in late February, early March, she advertised for another course, the rigging course, which cost $100,000. I was in, very much interested in it, so I did it as well. And then, sometime after, I went and I checked the six week period result. So I went and I checked. She said that the stuff has not switched down yet. It's, it's still processing. So I gave it some time, time to ask, I went again, and again, and again, and same thing. Now, the Ghana police forces claim that a man who was caught on video being assaulted by several police officers actually assaulted and injured the cops first. According to the police, the man was resisting arrest after reportedly robbing Ricky Mancu, a 31-year-old Venezuelan national of friendship on the east bank of Demerara, of a Samsung cellular phone and $25,000. The incident occurred at around 16 hours 35 on Sunday in the vicinity of the Starbrook Market area. Police said the ranks of a mobile patrol responded to the robbery. The ranks arrested a male suspect and placed him in the police vehicle, during which he became aggressive and attacked the ranks, who were forced to defend themselves. This led to a physical confrontation between the suspect and the police, the part of which has been circulating on social media, the police stated. In the video, the police rank is seen cuffing the suspect at the back of the police vehicle and subsequently holding the suspect down in an effort to arrest him. After managing to arrest the suspect, police said he was identified by the victim as one of three men who robbed him. 
The police force further stated that the suspect has refused medical attention and remains in custody while the injured police ranks were treated at the Georgetown Public Hospital. The Police Office of Professional Responsibility is investigating the incident. The police force is asking anyone who may have witnessed the incident between the suspect and members of the force to make contact with the office in charge of the police OPR on telephone number 227-1926 or the commander of the Regional Police Division on 226-1389. When the news returns, the Ministry of Labour and GAO will reach agreement to pay dismissed Wales workers and Guyana aims to wipe out AIDS in the next 10 years. This is the newsroom. Guyana on Tuesday recommitted itself to the Global AIDS Strategy, which hopes to end AIDS by 2030, launching a new National HIV Strategic Plan 2021-2025. The national fight against HIV and AIDS in the past seven years was guided by the National HIV Vision document, which came to an end last year. Kurt Campbell reports. The new National HIV Strategic Plan 2021-2025 puts Guyana on track with global momentum but sets achievable benchmarks for the country and strengthens its national HIV-AIDS response. By 2025, Guyana hopes to reduce new HIV infections among key populations and other vulnerable groups by 95%. Also by 2025, all babies are expected to be born free of HIV and other sexually transmitted infections, ending mother-to-child transmission. And Guyana wants to also reduce AIDS-related deaths by 95% within the next five years. And during the virtual launch of the innovative and progressive plan to achieve epidemic control on Tuesday, Guyana also boasted of being the first Caribbean country to achieve the first 90 of the UNAIDS 1990-90 goal. This means that at the end of 2020, 90% of all people living with HIV in Guyana knew their status. And Guyana falls short on the other two indicators. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony acknowledged these shortcomings and said while the country aspires to end AIDS by 2030, there are many other targets along the way. Look at our situational analysis that is in this particular plan. You would notice that uh, we did uh, do some good work and we were able to achieve the first 90 because we are now currently at 94% of persons who are HIV positive and have been tested, so they know their status. But we are a little still off with the other 290s, and that is for the persons who have been tested and are on treatment, we're at 73%. And for those who have been on treatment and are virally suppressed, we are at 75%, which means that we still have a lot of work uh, to be done over the next five years if we are going to get to what was the 2020 target and then move beyond that to achieve uh, what we aspire for in 2025. The minister said the political will exists to introduce a more comprehensive program with PrEP, pro-exposure prophylaxis, a medicine people at risk for HIV take to prevent getting HIV. And Guyana had only been making this medication available to couples where one partner has tested positive for HIV. But Dr. Anthony now says that the country intends to make it available for all citizens who are considered to be at risk. The minister said policies will be put in place to push self-testing among the population. Another area that we want to look at is self-testing. This is relatively new. And um, it has been advocated around the world and some countries have implemented it with uh, relative, relatively good success. And this is one of the areas that, of course, we would like to uh, put in place here in Guyana. So uh, over the next uh, year or so, this is another area that we'll work uh, to improve. The new National HIV Strategic Plan was developed, revised and finalized through a process that included all stakeholders over the last year. It commenced in January 2020. Acknowledging that there has been little change in the epidemic over the last five years, with a small decline in 2018, consultant Derek Springer said there is now a strong political commitment and enabling environment to accelerate the national AIDS response. He said while there has been achievements, the response is still faced with numerous challenges, which the new strategy addresses. To avoid the ongoing stockout of medicines, commodities, and supplies, including test kits, reagents, and consumables. HIV Vision 2025 will increase financing in social enablers, 
to, to accelerate primary HIV prevention and access to services and will prioritize investments in improving policies, laws, and practices relevant to HIV, reducing stigma and discrimination in all settings, improving access to justice, and strengthening community-led responses through greater collaboration with policymakers. Springer said there continues to be dysfunctional coordination, high levels of stigma and discrimination, and frequent stockouts of medication. These shortcomings, he says, will be addressed in the new plan. Kurt Campbell, Newsroom. Now, one week before Christmas 2020, the newsroom told the story of a small-scale Mahaika Creek farmer, Balram Tulsiram, aged 56, and his wife, Yashwati Prasad, 47, and their four children, two school-aged with special needs. Today, their situation has improved greatly because of the outpouring of support from the public and national institutions. At the time of the last visit in December 2020, the family, though contended, had faced tremendous difficulties in providing for and schooling the children. The situation was compounded with two of the younger boys, ages 8 and 2, being unable to walk and feed themselves. The other two children are 11 and 13. Since then, a team from the Ministry of Education, the Department of Education Region 4, the Special Education Needs Unit, and the Regional Special Education Needs and Disability Diagnostic and Treatment Center paid a visit to the home where two school-age children with special needs benefited from the intervention. The team comprised an education officer, a special education and welfare officer, and a physical therapist and coordinator. The team was able to conduct screening, physical assessment, and a general needs assessment of the immediate needs of the children with the aim of planning for their future. The team also took the opportunity to provide educational materials, inclusive of a tablet, hampers and toys, to spread the Christmas cheer. According to coordinator of the Regional Special Education Needs, Disability Diagnostic and Treatment Center, Kion Chung, follow-up visits are scheduled to address placement of the children in school and providing whatever support is needed. Now, the Ministry of Labor on Tuesday said it intervened in a dispute between the National Industrial and Commercial Investments Limited, that's NISL, and the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, GAU, in accordance with the labor laws. The meeting was chaired by Charles Ogle, the Chief Labor Officer. After extensive discussions, the Ministry of Labor said that the two parties agreed that all workers dismissed would be compensated for loss of wages for their annual leave, that they will receive payment in lieu of notice, and that all workers dismissed will be awarded severance for their years of service based on the Termination of Employment and Severance Pay Act. Now, nurses and doctors who are working directly with COVID-19 patients in Ghana are continuously trained and upgraded on the latest guidelines and treatment of COVID-19. This was revealed by the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, in Tuesday's COVID-19 update. The minister explained that while there is no official program to train the health workers, one can be designed and developed. But for now, the ministry has been rolling out countrywide training on infection control practices. We have also been uh, looking at how we can upgrade uh, staff um, to get a better understanding of issues relating to COVID and, and so forth. Those we would from time to time run virtual sessions. So for example, uh, when we design new guidelines for COVID-19, the treatment of COVID-19, uh, as we update those guidelines by our expert committee, uh, we then run training for all the doctors involved in COVID management. Uh, so these are ongoing efforts and uh, we'll continue to do them in this year. Well, even if UG doesn't have the program, we will design it once we see there is a need. So, for example, one of the things that we have been doing is to do infection control uh, because COVID-19 obviously is an infectious disease. And therefore, uh, if we can have good infection control practices in our institution, then we can limit the spread. And this is something that uh, we have done some training last year and we have did another round where we sent out staff to all the institutions and we trained people in every region uh, to be able to uh, teach infection control to the rest of the personnel in the region and to observe and to make sure that these practices are, are put in place. So this is going to be an ongoing effort because sometimes people tend to be a little bit complacent um, and so forth. 
We tell you now that a search conducted in two inmates Monday at around 15 hours 50 at the Lusignan prison on the east coast of Damrara has uncovered 490 grams of suspected cannabis, one cellular phone with a SIM card, one earphone, 29 packets of cigarettes, a quantity of Ziploc bags, 12 smoking papers, a quantity of tobacco leaves, and $30,000. All of the items were confiscated and lodged at a vigilance police station. The Lusignan prison have had numerous reports of corruption involving prison officers and inmates. When the news returns, the financial weather and bridge reports along with sport. Welcome back to Newsroom. Now for a look at what's happening in sport. We're starting off with some football news. The Ghana Football Federation has proposed a comprehensive competitions calendar for 2021, subject to conditions and approvals from the National COVID-19 Task Force, following a successful trial run of fan-free matches at the year-end bounce-back football classic tournament. More in this report. Under the proposals, competitive matches would kick off as early as mid-January with an official GFF futsal tournament, while full leagues and tournaments for men, women, boys and girls are provisionally slated to commence in March. All competitions are contingent on a safe and secure playing environment and can only proceed with the approval of the authorities. Many countries around the world have resumed sport activities despite the ongoing pandemic via spectator-free or partially attended events with rigid health and safety measures such as social distancing, masks, squad bubbles and testing in place. Careful planning for this year's proposed competitions has formed a crucial part of the 100-day bounce-back initiative under the UEFA Assist Programme in which football administration experts from European associations have supported the GFF team in its preparations for the responsible resumption of football, the GFF president Wayne Ford said and I quote. Following the huge success of the year-end tournament, where we were able to show that football can be staged safely once the correct measures are in place, we are now hoping to move the next phase of bounce back as we progress towards the careful return of competitive football in Guyana. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic still causing great suffering and disruption around the world, it is vital to emphasize that these competitions will only take place once the conditions allow and as the authorities feel it is safe. When we do move forward, we will ensure that all the necessary measures are in place to protect the well-being of our community. End quote. The GFF's own COVID-19 task force will continue to oversee and implement the Federation's bounce-back strategy with regional associations and private entities required to submit proposals for tournaments for review to ensure appropriate health and safety protocols are in place. The year-end tournament, which featured three matches played without fans and with strict health measures in place, was staged as a dry run for the return of football in partnership with the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport and the Kashif and Shanghai organization. If all goes to plan, under the GFF schedule, this year will feature seven months of sustained competitive football for senior men and women, with a similar tournament duration for each layer of youth football in line with FIFA guideline for funding and optimal development. Ford said, and I quote, in order to give our homegrown talent the best chance to reach its full potential, especially after the disruption of 2020, we will make every attempt possible with the support of the authorities to complete as much of this ambitious program as we can. If any competitions cannot be completed as scheduled for any reason, we will find new dates when conditions allow. End quote. Now, the talented forward Kelsey Benjamin struck the lone championship winning goal in the final of the Bounce Back Football Tournament for Georgetown All Stars on New Year's Day. It was the first sanctioned football competition since the pandemic struck, and with a busy 2021 international schedule for the Golden Jaguars, Benjamin said he was happy to leave a mark on the coaching staff. More from Akim Green. That was his contribution for his team in the two-day tournament. Given the unlikelihood of any other competition prior to Guyana facing Trinidad and Tobago on March 25th, then hosting the Bahamas five days later, in the first two matches of the World Cup qualifiers, the Bungs Back Football Tournament and training sessions will be the ticket to selection. I was thinking about being on football again, but thanks to um, Kashif and Shanghai and the organization for pulling this, this Bungs Back together for the um, the national players a chance, you know, show them, show them the level we are at right now. 
I glad I get a good start at the um, bounce back. So, see the coach will see whether we can start working with, with me for the um, World Cup qualifier, etc. Valencia League for the um, coming out to the end of the year. Well, in recent times, spectators' attendance has dwindled at local football matches. The Guyan Defence Force players stated it was extremely tough to play without any fans at the venue owing to the COVID-19 restrictions. It possibly will be the norm in the Caribbean for the year until the situation with the pandemic improves. It was really difficult because, you know, these fans gave the, um, the support and the energy, especially if they're down, you know, you can keep going and things, but it was very really difficult, but what else you could do? You have to cope with the um, situation right now. Benjamin has featured in eight matches for Golden Jaguar since making a debut in May 2017 against Indonesia. He scored in a non-FIFA international friendly against Suriname in March 2019. Noting he still has much more work to do to improve regarding his personal game, he confidently stated he would be ready if selected for the assignments in March. Really, the ability I have right now is really great, but I need a little more training, a little more exposure, and so on. But coming into the um, or Cup qualifier, I'll be ready, totally ready. The 21 year old said there are other young and promising talents that can be developed and blossom in the next two to three years if given the necessary exposure. Apart from the World Cup qualifiers, the Golden Jaguars will also have the Gold Cup group stage qualification in July, just after their second allotment of World Cup qualification matches in June. For the newsroom, Akin Green. Still in football, after viewing the players in action during the four-team two-day bounce-back football classic, President of the Ghana Football Federation, Wayne Ford, believes the technical staff have something very good to work with ahead of preparations for upcoming international engagements. Guyana is down to compete in the 2022 World Cup qualifiers and the CONCACAF Gold Cup prelims this year, and Ford was enthused by the level of football displayed at the Classic, despite players being inactive for nine months owing to COVID-19. I think everyone was pleasantly surprised with the quality of the game. Clearly, for someone that, that has a little deeper understanding of the game, you know that the pace was a bit slow, and there were moments when you can see the technical ability of the guys were a little bit off. But I think for, when you consider most of these players have been in active in a very structured way for the better part of 10 months and to come out and give this kind of performance we have to be pleased so we I, I've been sitting with the national technical team who are doing the assessments and they feel that they have something good to start with we are a little bit late with when we would have liked to start our national team preparation but I think this is very encouraging signs that while there's still a lot of work ahead of us we have something very good to work with um, any other similar plans like this tournament to get the national team ready before their international engagement? Well, that will be a technical decision. Um, once the preparation gets rolling in another week, the technical staff will determine if they need to have more competitive games um, or whether we... I know we have plans for international friendlies, but until the technical staff make those determination, it would be... It's not in, in, in for me to pronounce on those things. Some cricket news now. The Ghana Jaguars' planned fitness assessment and practice games ahead of next month's regional Super 50 have been rescheduled, Cricket Guyana said in a release on Monday afternoon. More on this report. Initially, the fitness assessment was to be held at the National Track and Field Centre at Lenora on Monday, January 4. That has now been shifted to January 16 at the same venue from six hours. The three practice games featuring squads led by Leon Johnson and Shimron Hetmeyer were initially slated for January 8, 10 and 12 at the LBI ground on the east coast of Demerara. Those games would now be played on January 18, 21 and 23 at the same venue, all starting at 9 hours. The fitness assessment and practice games are crucial to the Jaguars' preparation for the Super 50, a tournament they have not won since 2005. It is from those games that the final squad would be named for the tournament. Hetmeyer's team will come from Chandapal Hemraj, Raymond Perez, Kevlon Anderson, Shimron Hetmeyer, Shafane Rutherford, Akshaya Prasad, Kimal Savory, Bashkar Yadram, Kevin Sinclair, Dimitri Cameron, Keon Joseph, Clinton Pastano, Anthony Adams, Vishal Singh, Mavindra Dindial, Stephen Sankar, Sachin Singh and Ricardo Adams. 
Johnson's team would come from Trevon Griffith, Tevin Imlach, Leon Johnson, Jonathan Fu, Christopher Barnwell, Asset Fudadin, Anthony Bramble, Quinton Sampson, Kudakesh Moti, Ramal Lewis, Nayal Smith, Ronaldo Ali Mohammed, Tej Narain Chandapal, Devendra Bishu, Andre Stull, Toto Ambition, Richie Loknot, and Kelvin Umrao. Romario Shepard, Versami Pramal, and Raymond Rifa will be on West Indies duties, while Kimo Paul will be otherwise engaged in cricket duties, CGI noted. And Jason Holder, Rustin Chase, Shomar Brooks, and Shea Hope, all of whom opted out against touring with the West Indies team to Bangladesh for the three ODIs and two test matches, have been named in a provisional Barbados Pride squad to prepare for the regional Super 50 to be played next month. Shomar Holder, who recently made his test debut in New Zealand, but has only been included for the ODI leg of the Bangladesh tour, has also been included. The 22-man squad was announced by Barbados Cricket Association this week. The tournament will take place in Antigua from February 7 to 27. Now, skipper Kane Williamson smashed his fourth test double hundred, while Henry Nichols and Darrell Mitchell notched up centuries to fuel New Zealand's bid for a 2-0 series sweep in the second and final test against Pakistan on Tuesday. Williamson scored 238 and collaborated in a marathon 369-run partnership, a New Zealand record for the fourth wicket with Nichols, who made 157. Williamson then allowed Mitchell to complete his maiden test century before declaring New Zealand's first innings on 6.59 for 6. Pakistan, who managed 297 in the first innings, finished uh, day 3 on 8 for 1, still 354 runs behind and staring at an innings defeat at the Hagley Oval. And South Africa completed a sweep of their two-match series against Sri Lanka as they strolled to a 10-wicket win on the third day of the second test on Tuesday. South Africa knocked off the target of 67 without loss as openers Dean Elgar, 31, and Aidan Makram, 36, saw them to victory at the Wanderers Stadium with two and a half days of the contest still remaining. Success in Johannesburg followed a convincing innings and 45-run triumph in the first test in Pretoria last week and turns around a poor run of test form over the last year. Sri Lanka were bowled out for 2-11 in their second innings, surviving only 95 minutes of the day's play, with skipper Dimut Kuratnaratne scoring his 10th Test 100. And with that, we've come to the end of the news for this evening. Of course, you can find updates on these and other stories on our website, newsroom.gy, our Facebook page and Instagram. On behalf of the entire news team, my name is Avanash Ramzan. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you next time.